Hello everyone, welcome back to Coon Valley Campers. I'm Lee and I'm gonna show you how to maintain and repair your three-way fridge. In our previous video, which you can find up here, we showed you this, this three-way fridge and how it works. Today, we're gonna to be operating this fridge and we're going to show you how to maintain it and if it's broken how to repair it as well. Before we make a start on the repair and maintenance of a three-way fridge I just want to remind you that there is a 240 volt DC involved and there is gas involved. If you are not comfortable with dealing with any of those things then please seek the advice of an expert. This video is meant to be for information and entertainment and I can't stress enough that we are experienced in what we are doing here. We have the safety procedures in place. And if this fridge in particular was going back into a vehicle, we would have all the gas connections checked by a registered gas fitter and that vehicle would be signed off. So to clarify, safety first, we are gonna be dealing with 12 volt DC electrics, 240 volt AC electrics and gas and flame. Right at the top of the video, we said we were going to show you how to maintain and repair your fridge. In terms of maintenance, the best thing you can do without removing the fridge is keep it clean. Um, you don't necessarily have to remove the fridge to do that as well. On the outside of your camper, motorhome, you will see two vents and they are designed to act as a flue to, be, to have air drawn in at the bottom and pushed out the top and that's so the heat um, that is dissipated by these fins has somewhere to go. So make sure those air guards are clean and free of dirt to not restrict the airflow. And in order to clean the back of the fridge, you can actually remove those air uh, grates and maybe blow some pressurized air over these fins, over the back of the fridge. And if you can get either a paintbrush or a dustpan brush just to brush off as much dirt as you can. From the bottom vent, you should be able to remove this part and maybe even access um, the burner as well. So there's a lot of the maintenance you can do on this um, without actually removing the fridge entirely. Um, other elements that can break are the igniter, um, even the elements, they can burn themselves out as well. Um, but it's just keeping it clean inside and on the back of the fridge, keeping it clean is the biggest thing. Um, in terms of maintenance or repair, if you're not comfortable or you're not comfortable diagnosing the fault, bring it to somebody like us at Coon Valley Campers and we can help you diagnose the fault. Um, it really is just a um, process of elimination really. If you can't turn on your fridge, you may find that the 12 volt DC supply may have a fuse blown or it's just not strong enough coming out of the vehicle when the vehicle's running. Again, with the 240 volt, there might be um, a fault within the 240 volt system and that might be the problem there. And again, with the gas system, you may not have the right valve turned on or the gas, mo gas bottle might be empty. So there are lots of different elements that can restrict making this fridge work but when they do work, they are very, very good. Um, in terms of the gas, making sure all those systems work, um, we've turned off the bottle to make sure that the thermocouple is stopping the valve at the top. When the flame turns off, you will hear an audible click again from the igniter. So if in the middle of the night when your fridge is running on gas, you start hearing that click, you know that either your gas has run out or the flame itself has blown out as well. At that point, you will then turn on your gas bottle. We could go into a lot of information on these. If you have any further questions, please leave the comment. Please leave a comment down below. Um, we really like these fridges. Obviously the new 12 volt compressor fridges are more efficient in terms of electricity, but if you don't have the budget to go to a new 12 volt compressor fridge, then these still work really, really well. Um, and they normally get thrown away through misdiagnosis or replaced through misdiagnosis um, than actual, actually completely failing. So keep them clean, keep them maintained and they should serve you well for a very, very long time. 
The tools you are gonna need for working on a fridge are a selection of Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, a source of 12 volt, in this case, we're gonna use a 12 volt DC battery, and you're gonna need a source of 240 volt AC, and for that, we are going to be using our test lead. Now, we have made up this test lead here at the workshop because we do a lot of these fridges, and so this test lead in particular has a 240 volt plug which very clearly says connect to the fridge first and we have a 12 volt live uh, two 12 volt lives one red one yellow and a brown ground uh, terminal as well and they will get connected to this battery at the other end of this test lead that we have made up is the 240 volt um, live neutral and earth pins two live terminals and the two earth terminals you'll need. We'll go into that later. Again, stressing the safety point, you need to make sure you connect a 240 volt lead into the fridge first before you go anywhere near plugging it in. And when it comes to removing the test lead from the fridge you need to ensure that the 240 volt plug is turned off and removed from the socket before you go anywhere near doing that because obviously you may get electrocuted. This fridge in particular is a 1980s Electrolux three-way fridge. It runs off 12 volt DC, 240 volt AC and gas. Um, We've pulled this out of uh, this van behind me actually, um, which is having a lot of work done to it. Um, we don't know if this works today, so this is gonna be a journey for all of us. Um, but we, the first thing we are gonna need to do is remove this wiring and put our wiring in to see if the system works. First thing we're gonna do is familiarize ourselves with the controls on the front of the fridge and the associated wiring that goes with it. The switch over on the left here is, it's got a battery logo on it, but it's for the 12 volt DC input. That does not mean this fridge will run off battery power. It doesn't. If you were to plug this directly into a battery whilst it's in your van, it will kill your leisure battery within an hour. Um, the heating element in the back of the fridge is basically a huge amperage draw, and um, yeah, it will kill any leisure battery you have in an hour or so. So the 12 volt DC should only be switched on when the vehicle is in motion and running off a split charge relay. So you get independent 12 volt DC coming to this fridge, not from the leisure battery. The next switch here is for 240 volt AC and should only be used or can only be used when you are uh, located either at home or at a campsite and you're plugged into a 240 volt source. This dial here is, I want to say a temperature dial or a thermostat dial, but basically um, if you want the fridge on, on electrics, you take it off zero. To make it colder, you were to go all the way to eight and the lowest setting is one and you turn it off at zero. This dial over here is pretty much the same, but it's to control the gas. Um, again, zero is off, and you can crank it all the way up to eight, which is the maximum. On the left, this is your um, gas hold down switch. When you're trying to light the gas, you will hold this down, turn this switch, which is the igniter, and then once the flame is lit, you release this. It's much the same as your gas hob at home. Um, and in fact, later versions of these fridges, this valve um, is incorporated into this dial so you'll push the dial in and ignite on this older version of fridge it's got a separate uh, button to push down and then start turning that switch on which will give you the electric uh, igniter like your hob at home as well um, the wiring associated with these switches the 12 volt dc in from your split charge system um, sorry the split charge relay it comes in here in this case it's a blue wire with a brown earth and the electrics the separate 12 volt feed going to your igniter is coming in in this case on a yellow cable 
and the earth is on the brown. We have the incoming gas pipe here and the incoming 240 volt cable here. And what we're just about to do is remove all of these, taking note of which wire is which, and then we're going to be plugging in our test lead. Live to live, neutral, neutral, earth, earth. So at this stage, we only have the 12 volt DC connected live to the battery. And so what we're gonna do now is, the first thing we're gonna do, uh, the easiest thing to check is whether the igniter's working. And so once I press this switch, the igniter should go tick, 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 like your hobbit home. And there we go, so we know the igniter works. And what I'll do when we get to the gas element, I'll be able to show you the spark ticking over. The second thing I'm going to check is whether the heating element on the back of the fridge is working. Um, refer to our previous video on the fridge and you'll be able to see exactly where that is but we'll go into that in a second. So I'm going to turn this on now on that switch and I'm going to turn the dial all the way to number eight, go around to the back of the fridge and we're just going to have a quick feel to see if the element's getting warm. So we've turned the heating element on and it's this one just down here, so this bar here. And touching that, I can feel that's getting quite hot already, but using our laser thermometer, well, from this side, it's creeping up. It's up to 80 degrees here. So already that's getting really, really hot. And what's that, what that heating element is gonna do now is warm up the combination of uh, water and ammonia, and then the process will start. Um, I'm gonna turn that straight off. In fact, you can see on the front that the switch is lit. Um, now the power's going to it. We've now plugged in the 240 volt AC uh, on our test lead. We're gonna turn it on via the green switch, and then we're gonna turn it all the way up to number eight to see if the heating element at the back works. Well, that's lit up, that's a good sign just heard it click on it's all the way to eight if we go around the back here and we'll be able to test it okay already you can see that that temperature is increasing quite quickly I'm gonna say that works whilst we get set up to test the gas side we're just gonna leave that on the 240 um, and then we'll start checking the temperature all the way around and then we will get on the inside. In fact, we'll take a reading of the temperature on the inside of the fridge now, and we'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll take a second reading. <laughs> okay, so on the inside of the fridge, you'll see that we've got the cooling system ends here. I'm gonna take the temperature of that point there now, which is 11.9 degrees, it says 12. 
around 11. Now we should see that getting colder and colder and colder. We'll check back in five, 10 minutes and we'll see what it is. We've still got it on 240 volt. It's still on uh, number eight and we've left it about 10 minutes. So let's have a quick look. Again, ignore the state of the fridge on the inside. We're concentrating on just this part here. In fact, I can feel that getting colder already. Okay, so we left that at 11. Yeah, so it's already gone down one degree. Cool, so this is, I know it's working. I can feel it's getting colder. This tells me it's getting colder as well. So generally, really, really happy with that. In fact, that's saying 10.1 in there. In fact, that's probably a better gauge of the temperature because it's a non-reflective surface. So my fault for doing it on the metal. What we're gonna do now is unplug the 240 volt and do a test on gas and we'll show you the gas burner. We've tested on 12 volt DC, we've tested on 240 volt DC. The last thing we're gonna be checking on is gas. Now, excuse the jerry riggery of all of this. Um, it's just a temporary measure. We wouldn't put it into a van like this in any way, shape or form. Again, in terms of safety, if you have any doubts about what you're doing, don't do it. Go and, go and seek the advice of an expert or bring it to someone like us. We can do it for you. Um, but all this is providing today is just an input of gas um, to feed through the valve down to the burner and we're just going to see if we can get a flame. And there are reasons why we can't get a flame. Over years of use you get dirt in the actual uh, needle valve in there um, and coke build up, um, you know, carbon build up. And so we're going to go in there, check the spark first, then turn the gas on and then check the gas itself will light. So going back to our igniter, we're going to turn the igniter on because it's still connected to the battery. We'll turn the igniter on, but just so we can see it, I'm going to remove this guard first. And already you can see the dust, rust and dirt in there. So we're going to be removing these bits. You can just see the dirt in there. Move that to one side. The second guard we're going to be moving is this one just here. So we can see the actual spark occurring inside. Again, here we go. Check out all the dust and rust gonna come out of here. All of that's just sitting down there with the burner. And there's even like a, I think that was a beetle or something. So that's the crap that's coming out of it. And that's not good. Okay, taking a look in here, you can see the igniter, this lead here, is all really gummied up in there as well. And then this part here, the thermocouple which senses when the flame goes out and then the signal travels up this uh, tube here and will shut the gas off at the valve at the top so we're gonna spark the igniter now it sh you should see a blue spark coming from this point here to this point here if that's dirty then we're going to clean up both of these uh, and electrodes or probes or whatever you want to call them. We'll clean them up first and hopefully we'll get a good spark going from here to here. But let's give it a try. There you go. Hey. So what we can see now is a really nice blue flame, but I believe it can be stronger. What we're gonna do, now we know that works, is we're going to just remove a couple of these components, give them a clean up, use the airline, give them a bit of a blowout, put it all back together again, and let's see if we get any change in that flame. Good. that screw there's another one on the floor somewhere as well. It dropped, we'll find it. Okay, cool. Um, 
try as I might, sorry, excuse the noise, that's the uh, compressor just charging up. Try as I might, um, I can't get this off completely, it's just too rusted solid. So what we're gonna do is try our best to clean up all the terminations and the um, igniters and the end of the gas flame in an effort to clean it up. And the reason the compressor's charging up is because I just wanna blow some compressed air through the, um, the gas outlet just to remove any rubbish that might be in there. Already you can see, I'm glad I'm back here and not over there, but just a little bit of uh, air in there. This isn't even fully up to pressure and you can already see the dust coming out of there. Last thing I'm gonna do is um, just use the wire brush on the drill and we'll just clean up all the last bits of carbon from all those pieces in there. The last bit we're gonna check is the, um, the flue. Obviously the, um, the heat and the fumes from the burnt off gas need to go somewhere and so we're gonna remove this top part of the flue, remove the fin that's inside, and clean it all out. And I'll show you how to do that now. That was pretty well rusted on there. Okay, now in here, the last thing we've got is that little blade in there, and that's designed that when the heat comes up from the flame, it doesn't just disappear straight up the flue, it actually goes outwards onto the tube and then transfers that heat over to the boiler. So if we put that level just about there, it is directly next to this welded seam next to the boiler tube. Last but not least, we're gonna blow out any rubbish that might be down the flue. Pop that back in. Pop the stack back on. I'm gonna reassemble the parts now and then show you the nice blue flame. In this case, we haven't removed any of the gas fittings. Um, we've just taken the burner apart as much as we can and then cleaned all the terminals, cleaned all the flue. Um, we're gonna go and give it a test now on the gas. So gas on at the bottle. Igniter on, you can hear that clicking. The igniter will automatically turn off when the flame is lit down the bottom. Now that lit a lot quicker. And if we take a look, there's not a massive amount of difference in the flame, but I can see a bit more definition at the bottom there. So it's a stronger flame. And yeah, really, really happy with how that's turned out. Now, whilst we're down here, um, this thing here, it's just a drip tray. Um, I can whip it out and show you. This is in terms of the maintenance on your fridge. Sometimes these can get full of rubbish. And basically all this is, is a drip tray. This little tube here goes up inside the fridge and it's designed to just wick away any water. But in the case of this one, there's no water in it, but a bunch of dirt. So you can just sort of tap it out or even blow it out. And give it a wash with hot soapy water if you wanted to. But in this case, we're just gonna blow it out. Excellent. I'm gonna keep that lit for the time being, just so we can have another check on the inside 
to see if the whole system's working. If the 12 volt and the 240 volt systems are working, then we know that the heat coming from that flame is gonna have the whole system working anyway. So in terms of maintenance, if you're taking the fridge apart to this level, i.e. you're removing that big fiberglass heat shield whilst you're down there, just double check that your 12 and 240 volt elements are moving freely in these tubes. If they're not, give them a wiggle, make sure they move freely. If you feel they're rusted in there, take them out, give them a clean off, give that tube a clean out, make sure nothing's stuck in there at all. Um, if you're cleaning the gas burner, take it apart as much as you can, clean all the coke out, blow it out with pressurized air, and then use, this is just a little brass wire brush that you can attach to your drill or driver, um, and that just cleans up all the carbon as well. So thank you very, very much for joining us today, talking about how to maintain and or repair your fridge. If you like this video, go back and see the previous video on how, and where we show you how the whole cooling system works. And if you'd like to know more about um, what services we provide at Coombe Valley Campers, or if you'd like to learn more about how to build your camper van, please visit coombevalleycampers.com. There'll be an address down here, and there'll be a link down in the description below as well. Thank you very much.